I spent the last 90 days vibe coding two different mobile apps and grew them to $40,000 MRR. And I'll be the first to tell you that it is 100% possible to vibe code a revenue generating SaaS or mobile app using AI. This is the exact three pillar vibe coding framework that you can use to launch a revenue generating web or mobile app using AI as your co-pilot. Pillar number one, build a simple, lovable and complete product otherwise known as SLC. I've worked with over a thousand entrepreneurs and one of the core problems that I see is that they all think that they need to have a dozen features and all of those features need to work perfectly in order for them to ship a product that people are actually willing to pay for. And that couldn't be further from the truth of what a simple, lovable and complete product is. So what makes this app simple, lovable and complete? Well, let's break it down. This app is simple in that it solves one problem for an Amazon reseller. It helps people who sell products on Amazon find profitable products when they're shopping at local grocery or discount stores. This app is just 20 screens. As you can see, we have the main components that every app needs an onboarding flow, authentication, and then a core app loop where we keep users coming back every single day to solve one of their core problems. It is simple in that it doesn't have a lot of features that branch the user off down various paths. We have one path that we take the user down when they sign up and then one path that the user just repeats over and over again when they come back to find profitable products. That's what makes this app simple. What makes this app lovable is that it actually helps people make money. And in the world of marketing, if you can build a product that falls into one of three buckets, health, wealth, or relationships, you are appealing to natural human desires. And this app is very good at making people money who are actively selling on Amazon. And I'll tell you why in just a moment, because what makes it so good is the fact that it's complete, which is our third and final trait of building a successful product. What makes this app complete is how good we are at delivering the analytics. What you don't see here is actually what the analytics looks like in the app, but our analytics are so good. They're almost not even found on other Amazon product analytics tools because we have developed our own proprietary data. And maybe if you're a startup founder and you have your own unique way of doing something, that's what people might be willing to pay you for. So our analytics um, screen in the app is so good that people come back and they say, hey, we need this app because they have data that nobody else has. That's what makes this app complete. It allows users or Amazon resellers, I should say, to actually get data that allow them to make money. It has all the data that they need. It's not half of the data. And that's why we're able to demand even such a high monthly subscription at $35. And now we actually charge $349 for the year because this app is complete. Initially, when you launch, you may want to price lower. And I don't agree when people say they want to charge $2 or $5 a month. You need to charge premium pricing. If you're going to build a good app and you're going to build something worthwhile that you want to supplement your income or you want to um, you know, sell for millions of dollars and actually exit, you need to charge premium pricing so that you can generate significant revenue. I hate when I hear founders talking about, oh, I want to charge two or five dollars a month. What can you get for two or five dollars a month? We have to sell premium pricing so that every time your phone hits and you see that notification that somebody subscribed to your product, it's actually a significant amount of money that can change your life and make your day so much better. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this video and learning something truly valuable, then I have two things to ask from you. First, please like and subscribe for more content on AI startups and entrepreneurship. Secondly, if you want to work with me and my team one on one to launch your software idea yourself, click the link in the description to apply to the Dreams into Apps Accelerator. We've been running this accelerator since 2022. Over a thousand entrepreneurs have joined who literally know nothing about coding, and we take them from idea or stuck to launching and generating recurring revenue. Inside of our accelerator, you get everything that you need from curriculum, a serious community, access to my team of eight full-time technical and marketing coaches, access to me and everything that I'm doing internally to scale our mobile app portfolio to millions of dollars ARR. We have different tiers. So no matter where you are in the world or what your budget is, we have something for you. So hit the link in that description and apply to join to learn which program fits you best. For now, back to the video. Pillar number two, plan your checkpoints. It doesn't matter if you're a one person startup or a huge organization of software developers. 
every software development team uses checkpoints, sprints, or milestones to successfully complete their work. So what I've done for you is I've put together a chat GPT prompt that you can simply copy and paste into chat GPT and it will help you plan your checkpoints for your software product. It's very likely that if you're stuck, you didn't follow a sequential path to working toward an end result. Okay. We need to make sure that what we are building right now is something that we can build on top of and then on top of. Oftentimes I see entrepreneurs try to broadly build multiple features at the same time and that confuses the AI. The AI needs to retain context over what it's currently working on. So by focusing the path that our AI is generating code for, we can actually improve its accuracy and give it a more natural path. You have to pretend as if you are a boss or a product manager hovering over like a junior developer and telling exactly how you want that junior developer to write the code. And if you don't know how it's okay, because this type of prompt will help you. So go ahead and copy that prompt and paste it into ChatGPT. This is an interactive prompt, which will ask you questions to help calibrate your app idea. So here it's asking me the calibration questions, like what specific problem are you solving for your users? Who is your ideal user? What exactly should a user be able to do? What are the absolute must have features? What are the nice to have features, but not critical for launch? These two are probably the make or break of your software startup in the early days. Please be honest with yourself and indicate the features that are must have and indicate the features that are nice to have. Put your ego away and try to get into the shoes of your customer. Or what you can do is even interview customers and have them actually fill this out alongside you. This is a hack that I've done for B2B products that I've helped build. And then think about the core loop. Like what are the users actually coming back every day to actually um, solve a problem for? And then what tools or platforms are you already using? This will help you guide the AI to uh, give you advice and instructions based on the environment that you're already building in. I'll make sure to leave a link to this exact prompt down in the description and you can walk through this yourself. I promise it will save you a ton of time. I'm a big fan of using this microphone feature of ChatGPT, so I just spent about a minute talking into it. Pretty much I'm planning an AI sales coaching app. This is an app that I've already launched to the App Store, so I'm using it as an example. I'll go ahead and submit my answers here to ChatGPT and now it's giving me that clarified summary. So I've been honest with myself and I told it what my must haves are, what my nice to haves are. You need to be honest with yourself at this point too, and make sure that you only include features in the must haves that you know will actually drive value. Now you can see here that the AI create my milestone based plan. And this is a plan that's based on my methodology. So the prompt that you will copy from the Google doc uh, that's in the description will already have my methodology loaded into it. So your job with this milestone based plan is to follow it step by step. Do not get distracted here. You want to focus on the first thing, which is designing a clickable UI, then setting up your authentication and user onboarding, then setting up a Firebase database, and then do some basic CRUD functionality for the core features of your app. Then you build the proprietary feature, right? The AI role plays is my proprietary feature, for example. Then we generate scorecards based on AI analysis. This is also part of our uh, proprietary logic. Then step six is to test, launch, and feedback loop. What's cool is that this process is very similar to what we take our builders down inside of Dreams into Apps, except it's a lot more sophisticated inside the program where we have our own custom AI platform that you know AI generates you you know various artifacts, recommends you videos, creates your action plan, gives you step by step lessons and tutorials. It does a lot of advanced stuff. But if you're building on your own, then this is a fantastic milestone based plan that can keep you accountable and on track uh, if you choose to build on your own. Pillar number three is probably the most important one, and it's called zero loss execution, which is a fancy way of saying learn from your mistakes so that every time you prompt the AI, you're actually learning something. You're actually understanding how the product is working so that the next time that you prompt the AI, you can give it more specific instruction and improve the quality of your prompt. Another huge problem that I see from most founders who are stuck vibe coding is that the quality of their prompts are poor. You need to think as if the AI is a junior developer and you are a senior developer or their boss and you're looking over their shoulder and telling them exactly how to write code. As you mature in your prompting skills and as you mature as an AI powered developer, your 
quality of prompts will improve. But the best way to improve your quality of prompt is that anytime you have your vibe coding tool, whether it's Replit or Bolt or Lovable or whatever tool you want to use, ask it a question like this. Can you explain to me step by step how your code works and why it functions the way it does? I want to better understand how to guide you on similar features next time. By executing this type of command, you can have the AI actually explain to you in a guide-like format the underlying logic. Take this seriously because in the past, just learning this type of stuff would require, you know, navigating to dozens of medium articles and finding the right, um, you know, resource. But now you can just ask it a simple question and it will teach you. I really want you to take this seriously because the more you learn about code, the better you will be as a prompter. And again, you are building your software for one reason. It's to be in control, right? You don't want to hire a developer because you may not want them to steal your idea or keep paying them invoices. You may want to learn how you can do it so that you can stay in control and add more features. In order to do that, you should understand everything that's going on under the hood of your product, right? So as you are building out features, try your best to just ask it a simple question. How does this work? And instead of you know putting up a guard and not being open to understanding any of this code, just accept the fact that code is English, just written in a semantic way that computers can understand. For example, you see here that it says step one, data schema formation, excuse me, foundation. What I see here is defines the structure of our user data. And here is a block of code where it says export constant users. So users must be users. This is a variable name equals PG table. And I know that PG table means Postgres table. We're creating a Postgres table called users and we're setting the shape or we're designing the structure of that database. So a user entity, excuse me, a user record in the database will have the following columns, an ID, which is a unique identifier, a username, which is how they'll log in, a password, which is their hash password, an email, which is their contact and backup login method. So you see here, this is just a structure of a database, not too hard to understand, right? Then it tells you how we are hashing passwords and keeping track of security. And you're actually learning as you go on here. Okay, so please take this seriously. The more you learn about code, the more dangerous you will be. You now have one of my three pillar frameworks for launching a successful revenue generating software business. And if you like this video, you are going to love my full length free course that I have here on my YouTube channel. I'll make sure to leave a link right here on the screen so that you can click and jump right into it. But make sure you grab some water because we go deep and you're going to learn everything that you need to launch a revenue generating business, literally from idea to marketing and scaling and getting your first users. I'll make sure to leave a link right there. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.